Iran is hosting the 16th Summit of the Non-Aligned Movements. The heads of states are meeting in Tehran to discuss challenges facing today's world. NAM is the largest international gathering after the UN General Assembly. Iran has formally received the presidency of the movements and will chair it for the next three years. In his opening remarks, Iran's leader has called for a world free of weapons of mass destruction. The Heads of State session was inaugurated by a speech by the leader of Iran's Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei. The leader called for all of the world's weapons of mass destruction to be dismantled and said, global disarmament is urgently needed. Ayatollah Khamenei also called for a Middle East free from nuclear arms. حوادث دهه 90 قرن 20 نشان داد که داشتن این تسلیحات نمیتواند رژیمی همانند شوروی سابق را هم حفظ کند امروز نیز کشورهایی را میشناسیم که با داشتن بمب اتم در معرض امواج ناامنی های مهلکند جمهوری اسلامی ایران استفاده از سلاح هستئی و شیمیایی و نظائر آن را گناهی بزرگ و نابخشودنی می داند. ما شعار خاورمیانه آری از سلاح هستئی را مطرح کرده ایم و به آن پای بندیم. Iran's leader ended his speech by saying the non-aligned movement which includes two-thirds of the international community can play a major role in shaping the world's future. NAM is comprised of over half of the world population and the movement has 120 member states and 17 observer countries. In the first day of the Heads of State session, Egypt's President Mohamed Morsi handed over the presidency of the movement to his Iranian counterpart Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Uh, we approve the presidency of my dear brother Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the president of the Islamic Republic of Iran, uh, assuming the presidency of uh, the 16th summit of heads of state and uh, government of the non-aligned movement. Morsi called for unity among member states of the non-aligned movement as key to the bloc's success. He also described the issue of Palestine and the crisis in Syria as major challenges facing NAM. He says everything must be done to prevent a civil war in Syria. Morsi also slammed the Syrian government that prompted a brief walkout by the Syrian delegation. The Egyptian president said Cairo supports full membership of Palestine at the United Nations and slammed the Israeli occupation. The new head of the 120-country non-aligned movement, Iran's president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, said world nations are not satisfied with the status quo. Ahmadinejad denounced the monopolization of the world's management, especially through economic tools such as the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. Major economic centers of the world are possessed by a number of capitalists of a number of countries, and the majority of the people remain in poverty, and they are paying the price of abuse and mis their mismanagement. The Iranian president said the world is in need of a mechanism in which everyone has its own share of participation in global management. Ahmadinejad said NAM has the full potential to bring justice to the world. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon also addressed the opening session of the NAN summit. He pointed to the movement's evolving identity at a period of what he says is profound transition. The United Nations and non-aligned movement have a close history over 50 years. Guided by our shared principle of peace, justice, and equality, let us work together to meet the pressing challenges of our time. We must also keep working Ban highlighted the important role of the non-aligned movement in global equations. He added that the movement should work hand-in-hand -hand with the UN to ensure that global institutions, including the Security Council, reflect the realities and dynamics of today's world. The Indian Prime Minister was among other keynote speakers at the opening session. Nanmal Singh expressed concerns about the situation in Syria and said all parties should help end the violence there. Singh also called for the reform of the United Nations. Eugene Dabas is professor at the Notre Dame University in Beirut, and he joins us right now to shed more light about this uh, very important uh, NAM summit 
uh, Eugene uh, Davos, uh, we have a recurrent theme uh, which happened at today's uh, summit, and that was the criticism of the UN Security Council and its structure, especially the uh, veto of uh, these uh, uh, members, uh, basically the five-member bloc. Uh, uh, tell us how you think uh, this uh, uh, is going to be countered by NAM where the UN has failed. Well, the strength of NAM would be in its unity, and uh, this is the one weakness I would say we've seen so far. I mean, as long as they were navigating a path between the Soviet bloc and the U.S. during the Cold War, the cohesion was a mu a much, much stronger. Now I don't see them using their potential clout. If you look at the economic power that they have, I think they could achieve this if they would work together. But uh, I would like to see some results by Friday where they actually indicate uh, coordinated activities. Then they could do it. When you look at the speech that was made by uh, the U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, obviously he placed importance uh, for him to come to this uh, uh, NAM summit. But uh, when he talked about Israel, uh, he did not mention uh, anything other than Iran's criticism of Israel, who, unlike Iran, uh, is not a signatory to the NPT. Iran's leader has called for a world free of weapons of mass uh, destruction. So then comes the question of the sincerity of uh, Ban Ki-moon in what he said. Well, he's the world's most important diplomat, and of, for that reason, he's going to remain very diplomatic. Uh, we know that uh, Israel opposed uh, him coming to Tehran, so I think it was a major success to have him in Tehran and to have the UN uh, openly supporting this, uh, this event. I think that in itself, considering the opposition of the U.S. and Israel, is not to be um, taken lightly. And another important point that needs to be mentioned is the issue of, uh, since we're talking about Israel, the Palestinian issue. And Iran has set up uh, basically an action plan of which uh, a couple of the points that uh, was adopted uh, yesterday was the fact that uh, uh, their membership to the UN, for example, has to be tackled, not to mention uh, Israeli aggression against uh, Palestinians. Uh, actually, this uh, five-point action plan to be carried through, uh, given that Iran has a presidency, uh, through uh, a center in New York dedicated to this. Uh, do you think there's going to be any uh, advancements regarding the Palestinian issue by Iran holding the presidency? Well, that would be a major step forward uh, if Palestine would have a, a full-fledged membership as a nation state within NAM, because that would then really put pressure on the countries that are in NAM, but also are close allies of the United States. That would and, and potentially Israel. That would also put the squeeze on them to take sides. And here again, we see the problem of unity. Um, if that could be used in the next uh, three years uh, to, to leverage the situation, that would be wonderful. Uh, we can, we'll have to see whether he can deliver, because I'm assuming that Iran will have to do, uh, offer concessions from their part if they want to have major uh, pro-U.S. Uh, non-members supporting Palestinian membership. Eugene Davos from Notre Dame University there in Beirut. Thank you very much for your comments.